Well, chances are, if you're watching this video, you own a C5 Corvette and it's overheating, or you own a C5 Corvette and you want to do some cooling type maintenance. So I got you covered. Let's roll the intro, we'll get into it. What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Happy Tuesday, Tuesday, yeah. So I've covered pretty much every system on the C5 Corvette in my entire library. The only thing I've not touched on is actually the cooling system, which is kind of weird, but probably because I've not had any cooling issues, knock on wood. I suspect before I bought the car, probably the last 10 years or so, someone's got a lot of cooling work to it. The, uh, the water pumps are prone to fail on these guys and other little things. And, Car's 24 years old and the hoses are still in good shape. So at some point there was some cooling maintenance done. I see a lot, a lot, and I mean a lot of uh, comments on Facebook, people complaining of cooling issues. And I wanna dive into the type of cooling issues you're having and how to diagnose them, how to fix them, and all the fail points are. Now the C5 Corvette cooling system is not terribly crazy. It's a little unique to where it's a bottom feeder and I'll explain that in a little bit, but outside of that, it's very conventional. It works like any other ICE car the last 50 years produced. And real quick, if you're trying to do a diagnosis on your C5 Corvette, ask yourself, is it overheating and idle or is it overheating at highway speeds? And we'll answer that as we get further in this video. And also, uh, sometimes your LS motor may run too cool. Yes, that's a thing. You don't want your car running too cool. These guys run between 200 and 215, give or take, cruising speed especially. If it's running around 170, that's not optimal. I'm gonna explain why that's doing that and why you wanna fix that. Uh, my 2006 GTO had that problem and it drove me insane. I finally figured it out. All right, let's go to the car and I'll go over all the main cooling systems and parts and components to it and all the fail points. Sound good? Cool. All right, let's start with a couple easy ones. If your car is doing either one of these, these are pretty simple fixes. Now, the first one being, if you start the car and your temp gauge pegs out at 200, uh, by default, if the ECU can't read your sensor or if your sensor's busted, it'll go to 200. And obviously, if you just started the car, you know that's not accurate. So how do you fix that? Well, I'll show you. Right down here, right next to your headers, there's a little sensor. Zoom in on it. You can see right there, it's gold capped. That little guy. Right, right there. That's your uh, coolant temp sensor. Now, if you do any header work, there's a good chance you could break it. And I've done it twice. So easy fix. Throw a new one in, and that's good to go. Also, I apologize. My car is disgusting. Since I have my C8, it's had to live outside and drives me nuts. But when I get the new garage, sooner than later, they will both be in there. I, I know I hate it too. If your car at idle is overheating and it goes above 227 degrees and your fans are not kicking on, uh, you have a, a fan problem. Either the motor itself has shit itself or both or you have an electrical issue going to the fan. That's a very simple DC system. So if your fans are shot, it's pretty easy to troubleshoot. But that's a video for another day. We're just trying to figure out where the culprit is of your cooling system. So yeah, if your gauge maxes out when you start the car, it's definitely a sensory issue. And if your fans never kick on, you simply have a fan issue. All right, let's start with some elementary stuff here. That's gonna be your coolant expansion tank right here. There's a whole bunch of names for it, but this is your overflow expansion tank. There's some other names. Anyways, this is where you put your fluid in and when it gets too hot, it expands too. Now, when it's cool, it should be about right there. Mine's a little bit low, not much. I haven't serviced this thing in four years, so it wouldn't hurt to put a little bit in, but I will be doing a full service on this guy over the summer, and that'll be a video also. Now, if you notice, that this guy is low, you fill it. A few days later, it's low again. That's a little concerning. Now, honestly, if you find your car is leaking or losing coolant, you want to find a puddle underneath the car. That's best case scenario, and you want to smell like hot syrup, like a sweet, hot syrup smell. And that is just the coolant itself escaping the system. However, if you keep losing coolants and you can't find it anywhere, that could be a bad day. That means you have a head gasket failure and the coolants is most likely dumping into the cylinder, which is not good. However, the LS motors are not very prone to head gasket failure unless they're running a lot, a lot of boost. So nine times out of 10, it's gonna be an external leak, not inside your block. It'll be at a hose somewhere, the tank itself, the weep hole in the water pump, which is this guy right there. Oh, and also, if you're going to replenish the coolants in your tank, make sure it's the GM approved. It's an orange coolant, just a 
heads up. All right, so you determined there's no leaks, your head gaskets are good. So the next thing to look at is your water pump and your thermostat. So your thermostat's actually right inside of here. Open this guy up and that's where your little thermostat is. Your thermostat's, long story short, it throttles the amount of coolant that's gonna go through your block and it'll open up at a certain temperature. Sometimes they fail. Sometimes they won't open. And the little spring inside there is supposed to be temperature operated, simply gets stuck. And then now you don't have coolant going through your block. That's, that's one thing. Secondly, it could be your water pump itself. This guy right here. The impellers inside can fail. Nine times out of 10 though, when the water pump fails, there's a little weep hole and you'll get a puddle of coolant underneath the car. In the margins, the uh, gasket can fail. I've seen that, not very common, but typically when the water pump starts leaking, just replace the whole damn thing. Now you can test the thermostat by taking it out, putting it in, in boiling water and see if it opens up or you can just replace it. They're not very expensive. Very easy job to do to see if that is in fact your issue. But yeah, right there, right, right, right there is your thermostat, water pump, and then belt tensioners are just attached to it. But it's not a hard job to do. Pretty much you just take off your intake, your belts, your hoses. I think there's like six or seven, 10 millimeters. You take it off, scrape the gasket, put a new one on, make sure you put a new thermostat in, put all your hoses back in and you're good to go. All right, in a very rare circumstance, let's say your C5 is running very cool, about 160, 170, especially when uh, cruising around. That's simply because your thermostat is stuck open and it can happen. Sometimes they get debris from a gasket somewhere, some of the rubber is deteriorating. Um, I've seen people put stop leak in their car before and it gets stuck in that thermostat and it never closes. Therefore, you always have coolant flowing through your block when you don't need it to. Now you might say, I mean, what's the big deal? It'll run better. It doesn't actually, it's gonna hurt your fuel economy. Your cylinder detonation is gonna be off. You're not gonna get a full detonation in every cylinder. It's working for, it needs to have a very specific temperature to work perfectly. And you're gonna hurt fuel economy if your engine's running cooler. I know that's weird, but that's really a thing. Cool, so hopefully at this point, it's if I've solved someone's issue, it's a leak in your hoses somewhere, it's a leak in here. Uh, it's a leak in your water pump. It's a bad thermostat. You checked all that. There's no leaks. Head gasket's good. The car, especially when cruising, is still overheating. Again, we checked the temperature sensor. We checked the fans. We checked all the hoses. And everything checks out. So what could it be? Now, this is where this thing being a bottom feeder comes into play. If you put an aftermarket spoiler on this car, it's not like this one with the opening right here you're going to have issues. There's one of the markets where the openings are on the side and it's very prone to highway overheating. You want one just like this. God, this car's filthy. I'm so embarrassed. So that's one thing. If you have an aftermarket spoiler with openings on the outboard, you're going to have a bad time. You want one just like this, okay? Secondly, because this is a bottom feeder, hopefully you can get a picture of it, the radiator gets fed up underneath, right up there. And you can get all kinds of debris stuck up inside of there. I check this about every six weeks. I myself would have, it's kind of dirty actually. I've had all kinds of weird stuff up there. Bags of chips, plastic bags, candy wrappers. Any little bit's gonna affect your cooling. So you always, always, always wanna check that. I feel most of the time people on forums when they have issues with cooling, especially at cruising speeds, they have a really, really dirty uh, radiator. Uh, one thing also I didn't ping on is that the radiator itself, they can get little pinhole leaks in them. Uh, most of them have been replaced by now, but that can happen too. So always check your radiator, especially around where your hoses connect, your upper and your lower down there. So check for that. You can have leaks there. Most people get a, um, a full aluminum aftermarket or a lot more stout. And lastly, let's say your car is good to go, but you want to run even cooler. It's a little vents. I'm not trying to plug this, but these things make my car, especially at cruising speeds, makes my C5 run about seven, eight degrees cooler than before. These little track spec guys are awesome. Nothing but good things to say about them. I was a little worried about doing it, but I've had them on almost a year. And this car is parked outside on occasion when it rains for like a week straight. I'll get a little belt squeal when I first started, but it goes away in about 10 minutes. But again, it's, 
it's better if you have a garage C5, but it'll work in the elements too. But yeah, if you want extra cooling, these heat extractors are phenomenal. And it's really cool on a hot day, especially looking over the hood and you see the heat coming out of them. It just makes you feel better too. It's a lot more heat extraction on the fly. And one last thing I will touch on, if you live in a very hot climate, Phoenix or Death Valley or even Virginia in the summer, and uh, when the AC is on, you notice it tends to run a little warmer. That's absolutely normal. Any car, any ICE engine that has an AC compressor down there, you're essentially asking a lot of your motor. There's a lot of heat in here. And when it's really hot outside, it's really hot in here. And you're trying to get cold out of your engine compartment into your cabin. You're putting a lot more stress and unneeded taxation on your motor, uh, a load, if you will. I recommend in very, very hot climates, at an idle or going uphill, lower it or turn it off even. When you're cruising, you should be fine. But yeah, when it's 100 plus degrees outside, you already got a cooling issue somewhere else or a heating issue. The last thing you want is to make that worse by running your AC compressor, less than ideal conditions. Well, there you go, guys. A uh, quick anatomy lesson, overall guide of the C5 cooling system. It's not that exotic. The only weird thing about it is how it's bottom fed. But other than that, it all works the same. You got a heater core that comes off the cooling system, just like any other car. Very simple. There's tons of diagrams. If you have a question, your cooling system, feel free to ask. It's not that crazy. A lot of people will go crazy trying to figure out and they'll fix one thing, but there's probably, but typically there's two things at the same time going on. But just take your time. You know, you gotta figure out, is it an issue at idle or cruising speed? It just, it can drive me nuts. I will be doing a proper coolant flush with a hose this summer and I'll walk you through that. It's not too hard, give me a peace of mind too. And then this weekend, I'm doing a lighting engine light kit for a friend of mine. He's been on the channel before. We're gonna do it on his 2LT C8s with the camera. And then I'll do mine in a few weeks without a camera. It is different if you, depending on which C8 you have. This is probably my C5 years, really. I, I don't care. I get it. Totally get it. But yeah, that'll be coming out of this weekend. So that's all I got for today, guys. Hope you guys found some value in this video. And feel free to ask questions about anything cooling or C5 related. So all right, guys, that's all I got for tonight. I'll see you guys next time.